Because I remember when I learned how to meditate in the Word of God, I might have a terrible asthma attack going on. And I would begin to meditate upon the Word, speaking, thinking, seeing it, saying it. And as I did, I could just see myself getting better and better. And by the end of that hour, it almost took me an hour to do, I would be well. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today. We're here to discuss the Word of God. You know the Word of God is a right now word. I believe there's a right now word for you today. I'm going to be discussing what God has done for me. You know, everybody has a testimony, and I've got a good testimony about healing. And so we're going to be talking about God's healing word. Just, I'm going to take this lesson right out of this book and tell you how to receive the Word of God, how to take the Word of God like medicine. And um, so we're going to begin. I hope you got your Bible. And you can just follow right along with me because God's Word is talking to you today. Amen. The first scripture we're going to talk about is Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So there's two kinds of hearing. The word you hear somebody say to you and then the hearing that you can hear yourself say and it's God talking to you. There's a rhema word, a right now word for you from the Word of God. Psalms 107 and verse 20 is a powerful word. I love this and, and Mark and I confess this scripture a lot because it says he sent his word and it healed you and delivered you from your destructions. I like the Message Bible. It says, He spoke the word that healed you, that pulled you back from the brink of death. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is something that's very real to me because I realized as I was studying and remembering what God has done for me, it, I could have been on that brink of death. But because of the word of God and it living in my heart and what I've been taught about faith, I'm alive. And on the back of my book, I use this scripture, I didn't die, I lived. And now I'm telling the world what God did. And I'm so glad that right now you're listening and you're hearing and I hope that hope is springing up in your heart, no matter what your situation is, that God is sending his word to you today. The next scripture I'm going to give you, these are just foundational scriptures, is from Proverbs 4, 20. And it says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them, and health to all your flesh. I love that one. Then I'm going to move over to the New Testament in Matthew, the 8th chapter, in verse 16, it says, And when the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and they cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and healed our diseases. He bore our sicknesses. And so you have a witness from the Old Testament and the New Testament. You have God sending his word, his written word. And then you see Jesus, who's called the living word. And he came on the scene. And when he was anointed by the Holy Spirit, he just started out. First thing, he preached, he taught, and he healed the sick and cast out devils. And that's the word in manifestation. And you know, Hebrews says, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So while you hear the word of God, let's just think of Jesus is talking to you. You've got an appointment with the Lord. And so I like to take the word of God. The word of God is not meant just to be on the shelf or on the wall, or it's not just meant for the preacher to say, 
It's meant for us to eat. And everybody likes to eat. And as we meditate upon the word of God, it's like eating God's word. And Jeremiah says this in chapter 15 and verse 16. Your words were found, and I did eat them. And they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. The Message Bible says this. When your words showed up, I ate them, swallowed them whole. What a feast. Woo! You can tell he was happy about getting that word. And I love the Jerusalem Bible. It says, when your words came, I devoured them. And that makes me think of a man. When you're so hungry, you just eat that word, just stuff your mouth full, just swallow it whole. And um, the Taylor Bible says, your words are what sustained me. They are food to my soul. So I want you to get your mind wrapped around this thought that God has sent his word to you and it's a meal that you're going to eat. How do you eat it? Well, we're going to find out. One of the ways is to meditate upon the word of God. Psalms 1, David said, I meditate on it day and night and I shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth your fruit in your due season. And so as you meditate on the word, your roots are growing down into God's word and you're drawing up because that's the soil. The, the word of God is the soil that you're planted into. And you're meditating and drawing up the life, the zoe, the power, the healing power of God. David said, Psalms 104, my meditation shall be sweet. So as you meditate, just think you're eating something really sweet. I know probably a lot of you like chocolate, but the word of God is sweeter than honey. David said it's sweeter than chocolate. Amen. And it'll make you smack your lips. Oh, that's good. And that's what I did as I began to take the word of God. It began to be so sweet to my heart, and I began to meditate on the word. Well, you know, meditation began in the East. A lot of times, you know, we think of meditation as a, you know, the Buddhist style of meditation where you cross your legs, you know, and you're doing this and you're going home and trying to get your mind quiet. Well, that's not the right kind of meditation. Christian meditation is engaging your spirit because you are a spirit made in the image of God. And God's words are spirit and they are life. And as you hear the word, you meditate, you think upon the word, it's going right into your spirit and you're becoming one with that word. And I like to uh, look that word up in the dictionary and it means this, to study, to chew, to think over, ponder, excogitate, muse, reflect, mull over, and speculate. Now, when I saw that word excogitate, I didn't ever use that word before, so I had to look that one up. And it means this, to invent or create mentally. So when you're meditating on the word, you are giving it some thought, just like an inventor would think up, how does electricity work? How does that light bulb work? He had to think about that over and over and practice until he created something that was not there before. So the word of God is creative words. God spoke and the worlds were created. And so as you speak, your world will change. You are framing your word, your world with your words as you meditate upon the word of God. The word meditate also means cogitate. That means this, to think deeply, to think out, to think up to dream up, and to hatch. So God's word is a seed. But when you plant it in your heart and you meditate upon it, things will begin hatching. New life will come, new possibilities. You'll begin to see yourself differently than before. I remember, you know, as a little girl, I was born uh, kind of sick. In fact, when Mark met my daddy, my daddy took him aside and he said, Mark, uh, you know, I know you want to marry my daughter. But I just need to tell you something. She's been sick a lot of her life. <laughs> and Mark said, that's no problem. We got the word of God. We can conquer and she will overcome that. And, you know, I did. 
Praise God, and I'm going to show you how. I started sick, but I didn't stay sick because I took the Word of God. I learned how to take the Word of God like medicine, like I'm going to teach you. Praise the Lord. And through meditation upon that Word, it became engrafted in me, and my whole outlook changed. And your whole outlook can change as you meditate on the Word. The Spirit-Filled Study Bible talks about meditation, and it's called Haggah, which um, is a Jewish or Hebrew thought, the tradition of meditation that came all the way from the Bible. And this is how that they would meditate. And this is probably what David was thinking about when he said, I will meditate in your word. It will delight me. I will eat your word. He was thinking of this. Their tradition is to repeat the words in a soft droning sound while utterly abandoning outside distractions. So what you're doing when you take that word of God and you open up your Bible and you begin to eat it like Jeremiah said, and then you begin to look at it and you become one with that word. Now, you know the Jewish people, they'll even rock back and forth. They're just so focused in, nobody's gonna distract them because they are meditating and they're focused in on what God is saying. And it says about them that they get lost in communion with God. Ooh, I like that one. Because I remember when I learned how to meditate in the Word of God, I might have a terrible asthma attack going on. But I'd get my scriptures out, and I'd open the Bible up, and I'd start at the beginning. And these are the scriptures that are in my book. I would start at the beginning, and I would begin to meditate upon the Word, speaking, thinking, seeing it, saying it. And as I did, I could just see myself getting better and better. And by the end of that hour, it almost took me an hour to do, I would be well. I'd be over that attack. So the Word of God is overcoming power. And I want to testify to you, it works. Jesus said, Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So this word is not just mental food. It came out of God's mouth. My husband says it's mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. I love that. So when you read the Word of God, you are breathing in the very breath of God. Every word is God-inspired. It came out of Him. And as you take it into you, it's like you're having that new life flowing into you. So it came out of God's mouth and it comes into our mouth. His words are spirit and life, Jesus said in John the sixth chapter. And so they're effective. It's like he breathes his vital breath into you. When you take that word, whoo, you might be just about to faint. You might be giving up, but take the word and it'll give you new life and new breath. Job 32, 8 says, There is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. So the inspiration, it's his life breathed words. 2 Timothy 3, 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed. And so how do you take it in? You're a spirit made in the image of God. You have his life and your nat his nature in you. His words are fitted to your mouth. They are meant to go into your heart. So as we meditate on, you put it in your mouth. Amen? Now, I like to take the word of God. You know, Jeremiah said it is food. So let's think about food again. And, you know, I want to remember back when my little baby grand twins were little and they began to eat eat and we would feed them their food. Oh my, have you ever fed a baby food? There's food on their face. There's food in their hair. There's food all over their tray and their clothes. It fell on the floor. There's food everywhere. But you're not so excited about the food everywhere. You want that food to get into their mouth. And a lot of church people are having experience with the word. They got it on their clothes. They got it in their, their hair, their 
talk, you know, but not actually getting that word in your mouth. And only the word or only God's food that you get into your heart, in your mouth, will be effective for you. So it's important to know how to get it inside your spirit. When it gets in your heart, whoo boy, it's like an explosion takes place. And mighty things are done. Strongholds are taken down in your mind. I remember thinking, I'll never get well. I remember thinking, maybe healing is for some people, it's not for me. I would be just so discouraged. But as I would meditate on the Word of God and get it in my heart, it's like I had a divine appointment and a connection. I was charged by God. And so God's Word is His medicine. In Exodus 15, 26, God said about Himself, I am the Lord, your physician. I am the Lord, your healer. So he says, don't look anywhere else. Look to me first. And so God is your physician. And I say, well, what do you do when you go to the doctor? A lot of times you're going with the purpose. I need a prescription. I need some medicine. And so I'm going to the doctor. I believe he'll give me the right medicine. When I take the medicine, I'm going to get well, right? Have you ever done that? So when he writes that prescription, you take that and run off to the drugstore. You give it to the druggist, and they give you back medicine. And you look at the medicine, right? You read the directions. Is that correct? What do they say? They may say, take every four hours with water. So we're supposed to follow those uh, directions, the prescription. And so you take it. Time, okay, four hours later, I'm going to do this again. And you might be busy, busy, and all of a sudden you go, oh, oh, it's four hours. i got to take my medicine. So you go get it, and you take it, and drink your water, whatever you're supposed to do. You have to take it according to the directions. Some medicine, you put it on your skin or topical, whatever, but you take it according to the directions. And sometimes they say, uh, like as with the antibiotics, Take it for two weeks. Even if you start feeling better, keep on taking that until you've finished up the whole dosage, right? Because it'll prevent you from being sick again. You stick with it. Well, what if you start taking it and you don't feel any better? Do you throw it away? Say, man, that's not doing me any good. You say, no, I'm going to stick with it because the directions say to stick with it. So I believe I paid I don't know, sky high amount of money for this medicine, right? Costs a lot of money. I'm going to take it. Well, the Word of God, whoo, to get it to you, costs God a whole lot. It's valuable. And if we use it according to His direction, just like we would in natural medicine, it will work. You will see results. A double dog dare you to do it. Let's look at Proverbs 4.20. Proverbs 4.20 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. So this is God's prescription for you. So what do you do with your prescription? You pay attention to it. You value it. You do it. And so God's prescription tells us simply some things that we must do with the Word of God. First off, pay attention to the Word of God. Now, if you're going to pay attention to something, it's important. You put it at the top of the list. It's the first thing you're going to do in the morning. Pay attention to the Word means you're going to look at it. You're going to hear it. The second thing it says here in Proverbs 4.20 Incline thine ear into my sayings. So listen to it. You know, you can hear the word above every other sound, just like a mother can hear her child's voice over every other child's voice. So you can hear God's word. See, the word here says, Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. So there's three things that we're going to do. We have to be doers. Amen? 
So he says, my son, he's pulling you really close. He said, I'm giving you something that's really important and you're very important to me. So God is telling you, listen, pay attention, incline, attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. So you're paying attention to it and you're inclining your ear. How do you incline your ear to the word of God? Can you hear it? No. The only way you can hear it is if you read it, you're looking at it, and you begin to say what it says. And once you say what it says and you look at it with your eyes, you can start hearing it. It's alive. God will start talking to you. So it's so important to say the word of God yourself. Some people say, well, I'm just listening to a CD on healing. That's wonderful. But it, go another level. I want to challenge you. Go another level. Don't just listen to somebody else say it. It's good to hear your pastor say it. It's good to hear me say it. But once you take that word, you put it into your mouth. It is fitted for your mouth. And you hear your own voice with your own ears. Something is changing in your mind, your soul, your imagination. That word is going down in your spirit and connecting with your spirit. It says, let them not depart from your eyes. When you look at the word of God, not just hear it, but look at it, it's coming in your eye gate. And it's like a mirror, James says. You continue in the word, you will be changed. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you're my disciples. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. This word is so personal to you. Proverbs says, they are life to those that find them and health to all your flesh. He said to keep them in the midst of you. And when you think of midst, it's the middle, right in the middle. Keep it in there. Keep it in your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all your flesh. That word life is medicine. The word health means medicine, and it will continue to work in you. It's God's healing word and sent to you to bring you health. And I don't know what your problem is today, or you might be facing something in your future or a member of your family, but there's not, it's not a cons uh, coincidence that you're listening today. You're listening on purpose. God has sent his word to you. I remember when Mark and I first started dating at college. We were at college, and then we separated for the summertime. He went to Louisiana to be a youth pastor, and I went to Colorado. And back in that day, we didn't have um, cell phones, texting, any emailing, nothing like that. We had to write letters. And, oh, every day I would go to the mailbox. Is there a letter from Mark? Is there a letter from Mark? Whoo, there was a letter from Mark. And when I got that letter from Mark, it had his scribbly handwriting on there. You know, I had my name on there. I thought, oh, that's it, that's it. And I would go to a, a quiet place. And I'd open that letter and I'd get that letter out. And I'd read it. And I could almost hear Mark's voice be talking to me. He'd tell me things, you know. Of course, he always ended out with love, and I like that. But I treasured that. I put it in my heart, and I would remember. And I could hear his voice even while I was reading the words. He was talking to me through his words. And I treasured that. And I still have those letters, and I like to get them out. Well, I tell you what, God has sent you a letter. It's his word. It's a love letter. And it's a personal letter to you. And it's a letter of healing. It's a letter of restoration. And no matter what you've been through, I want to give you hope. He has sent his word to heal you and deliver you from your destructions. Right now, in Jesus' name, I'm going to pray a prayer of faith. God, let the word of God be fitted into the hearers' hearts and their minds. That no matter what they've been through, no matter what they're facing, no matter the doctor's report, in Jesus' name, it's subject to change because God's word is above every other word and he's watching his word to perform it for you. 
praise God. Take that word. Be changed. Until next time, God bless you. You are watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Are you struggling in your health? Do you need to know how to receive your healing? So when you take the word like medicine, you're taking Jehovah Rapha. You're taking him. He's your healer. He's your medicine. Learn how God's word is a practical guide to receiving your healing. Order God's healing word and the two CD set, Biblical Meditation, God's Medication today. It was already paid for by Jesus, but it was her faith and her praise that got the manifestation for her. You also get the three CD set, The Praise Cure. Mark teaches how praising God doesn't cost a thing, is very delightful, and it works all the time. Your gift of $25 or more will help Mark and Trina train pastors around the world. Call today, 318-767-2001, or visit markhankins.org. Learn how to use your authority to receive and maintain your healing. Get your copy today. I want to share my testimony with you. It's my book, and it's got my story in there, got about how God healed me from not only asthma, but a brain tumor. But he sent his word to me. And it doesn't matter what your problem is, don't matter what you're going through, God has a word for you, and it's a healing word. So um, I just felt impressed several years ago to write all this out. So it's got my testimony. It's got directions on how to meditate in the Word of God. And then the next section is important because it shows you how to act on the Word of God, how to release your faith. Because you see what God's done, and then we need to do something because we have to be hearers, and not only uh, hearers, but doers of the Word of God. I love this chapter on authority, how to use your authority as a believer. Oh boy, that's powerful. And the next chapter is on how to maintain your healing, how to stay healed. I remember talking to um, Dodie Osteen, and she said, still today, she'll meditate on, I don't know how many scriptures, scores and scores of scriptures take a two hours to meditate every single day to this day after God healed her of cancer. Download the Mark Hingis Ministries app today. On the app, you can watch our TV show, listen to the radio program, read the daily devotional, and see where Mark and Trina will be. You can stay connected to Mark Hingis Ministries wherever you are. Download the app today on any iOS, Android, or Windows device. Simply search Mark Hingis Ministries and start feeding your faith today. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.